I know, I'm standing here like a plank. Plank length, yes. What is the plank length? Well, the first thing to say about it is very, very small. Uh, and physicists tell us that uh, it's the smallest length scale imaginable, really. The subject today is the plank length. Now, this is a, a length of a plank, but this is not what a plank length is. This is about 1.6 metres. It's the height up to about my nose. So that's 1.6 metres. And I want to talk about something which is a bit smaller. Well, a lot smaller. Well, I can't give you an idea of how much smaller it is. Suppose I take this length and I chop it into 10 equal sections. And now that I take this tenth, and I divide that up into 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And so then I take this small piece here. I can't show you anymore because it's going to be a tiny little sliver down there. That's chopping it three times. In order to get down to the plank length, I have to chop this 35 times. That is, do this process of contracting by a factor of 10 35 times. So it goes down to 1.6. 10 to the minus 35 metres, an unimaginably small quantity. You can see this length coming down to that. That you can visualise, but seeing it done 10 to the 35 times is ridiculous. This is a length which is smaller than the size of a proton by a factor of 10 to the power 20. Let me write it down. And do, you have, do I have to do all these 35 yeah. of them? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and so on, and 35 of those zeros. Now I'm going to write this number down so you can see how ridiculously small it is. It's not 0 point, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. That would be five zeros. It's that with another five. Oh, and that with another five. And if I stop there, that would be 10 to the minus 15 metres, which is about the size of a proton, the smallest thing that people can more or less visualise. Oh, no, you can't visualise it. We're going to carry on. One, two, three, four. And that's 10 to the minus 20. No, 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 no. That's... Oh, I can't work it out. I'm going to have this plus another 10 to the minus 15. I feel so ridiculous doing all this, but there it is down there with these extra four sets of zeros with the one at the end. That's the distance, and then it's one six. So in metres. So this is the Planck length. It's arrived at by taking three fundamental constants. Planck's constant, the gravitational constant, big G, and the speed of light. Now, Planck was the first person to come up with this length because he just invented quantum physics by studying black body radiation. Now, the history of it's quite strange because uh, back in the 1880s, Max Planck and others were thinking about the heat energy that was heat and light energy that was coming out of hot bodies. And in the course of that, he started getting a feeling for that there was something quantum mechanical happening. From that, he came up with an idea of uh, fundamental units for mass, length, and time, and the unit of length is called the Planck length. So the Planck length is telling you that when you try to merge the fields of gravity through Newtonian constant big G with the velocity of light, which is something that comes, comes in electromagnetism, with quantum mechanics and merge them all together, out of it comes somehow a natural length called the Planck length. Let's just write down the three constants then. Here's Planck's constant H, or as it's sometimes written H upon 2 pi, which we could signify like this. This is big G, the gravitational constant. That tells us why gravity is as strong as it is, why the Earth has got its, its, its uh, strength of gravity on the surface. Or, it, of course, big G did, and the mass of the Earth determines the orbiting of the Moon around the Earth. And then the other constant is uh, C. Now, the curious thing is, if you multiply H bar and G, and then divide by c cubed, the cube c, that gives you the square of the length, or if you like, an area, and that's called the Planck length. So the Planck length, if we now take square roots and want the length itself, we take the square root of that quantity, and that then gives me the Planck length. And if you want to talk about the early stage of the universe, the period before the, it expanded to the Planck length, we have no idea of the laws of physics, because to do that, we'd have to have a quantum theory of gravity, a none exist. Well, if they exist, they exist in a form that nobody knows whether they're right or not. Now, what does it all mean physically? Well, of course, this is, this, what it's telling us is that perhaps 
if we take quantum mechanics and gravity into account, space itself is not really properly defined on length scales smaller than the Planck length. Maybe space-time gets foamy, as they say, on these sorts of length scales, and then all the particle physics guys and uh, these cosmologists start worrying about their ideas of bubble universes springing out, out of the Planck length. But you better go and talk to a cosmologist. Or, if you get a black hole, uh, for example, if I fell into a black hole, I would be spaghettified, turned into long strands of things and disappear. But as I go into the black hole, all the entropy associated with me, my complete disorder, how my hair is untidy, everything about that would be dissolved in the black hole. And in order for the laws of thermodynamics to hold, the entropy of the universe must increase. And if the black hole is part of the universe, the total entropy must increase and the black hole must have an entropy. And the person who wrote down the formula for the black hole's entropy originally was Bekenstein and then... Um, Stephen Hawking, and he wrote down the entropy is equal to Boltzmann's constant times the area of the black hole divided by 4 times the Planck length squared. So there it comes in, in this model of the entropy of a black hole, and that is believed by most theoreticians, despite the lack of any evidence, to be the entropy of a black hole. So there is a practical use for this Planck length? Well, if you're a cosmologist or a particle physicist, I have to say in my everyday work on semiconductors, I don't use it too much. But it's great to think about because it's such a small length. 